What's your best story that is 100% real but nobody believes you? When I was 12 years old I owned a chihuahua named Taco. We named him this because he looked identical to the famous Taco Bell dog on the commercials, you know, Yokiero Taco Bell. Anyways, one day at home, Gulf Coast of Florida, I took Taco out for a little walk so he could go to the bathroom. Well mind you Chihuahua's legs are so short that if they run away you can literally go catch them with no problem so leashes aren't required. So back to the story, Taco was minding his business and as the 12 year old boy I was, I got distracted by a pair of lizards humping on a nearby tree. I noticed a shadow fly by and then heard a little yelp. I switched my focus only to see Taco in the talons of an eagle or hawk flying away into the sunset. I then proceeded to scream, Taco, no. Drop him but, I couldn't do anything about it so I walked inside and told my mom and she still doesn't believe me to this day. Eight years later no one believes me and I am still missing Taco. My friend got a girl pregnant when he was 13 and the girl was 15. They met at the beach in Panama City, Florida. She was rich and lived in Ohio, he was poor and lived in Georgia. My friend never told anyone but me. He is now 28 and has a 15 year old could only I know about. The only reason he got away with it is because this girl's family was super rich. The girl never said who the guy was and would sometimes fly down to visit him in secret. I did not believe this shit until I saw pictures of his kid. His kid has never met him either, and I do not think he even knows he exists. I always daydreamed that if my friend died I would have to tell his parents that he actually had a kid and they had been a grandma slash grandpa for 15 years and never knew it. On the way to visit a friend, my husband and I got lost on a highway in Pennsylvania. By some weird chance, my husband's friend drives past us in the opposite direction. We see him and turn around to catch up to him. Finally pulling over, we are standing on the side of the road, two-lane highway, discussing the directions to the friend's house. Surrounding us are farms with corn and other various crops. Out of nowhere, a duck appears on the opposite side of the road. He is looking at us curiously while we are talking. We watch him look both ways and waddle across the road to where we are standing. Cars are honking at him as they attempt to drive past. He gets over to my husband, pecks at his shoe once, and then promptly walks back across the street dodging cars traveling at highway speed. He made it back across the street and disappeared into the crops. He risked his life to peck my husband's shoe and simply waddled out of our lives. Was walking home when I was 16 and a car pulled up behind me. Inside were four guys in balaclavas and a gun pointing out the window. The gun went click. So I effing bombed it over a hedge and ran like hell to the sound of some guy yelling wait, we're not going to harm you. Edit, since so many people are asking, not likely a prank. Nope. Friendly neighborhood terrorists. Either the IRA or UVF. Probably the IRA. How I ended up with my dog. I was on my way to the bus when I saw this dog calmly walking about. He approached me, I petted him a bit, and went on my way. For some reason he kept on following me. There were other people around us, but he kept on walking behind me. The bus station is by a busy street. I hoped to shake him off by the time I got there, but no. I wasn't sure what would happen if I got on the bus, would he run after it? Would he hop on the bus? The stop I intended to hop off on is another heavily trafficked place. Neither of the options looked good, so I did the only thing I could think of, I headed home. On the way I called my dad and told him a dog was following me. He laughed, thinking it was my way of trying to skip school. He went along with it though, promising to drive us to the nearby dog shelter. Imagine his surprise when I come home with a dog. So, we drive to the dog shelter, where we have to turn him in. A week or so later we get a call saying that no one had claimed the dog or reported him missing. My dad wanted a dog, different breed though, but seeing as this fellow had followed me around he figured well, this is the dog. Once when I was a kid, my uncle and I were visiting a friend of his at the convenience store where he worked, a few blocks from our house. There was this Rottweiler there, and he followed us home. This being the 80s, we figured he'd been abandoned and just figured we'd keep him. Abandoned dogs are nothing unusual in this town even now. A couple of weeks later we went with the dog to the park across from the convenience store. Dude was there and called the dog by name, dog responded. Obviously, we'd found the owner. So the guy put Bear in his car and we went to leave. Bear jumped out the window and followed us. Guy said we could have him since he obviously wanted to be with my uncle. He was a great dog. I was in Sao Paulo, Brazil, on a business trip. The night before departure, I wanted a drink, but the lounge of the hotel was closed for a private party. 
I didn't want to go out of the building alone at that time so I started talking to one of the private guards. Then this lady came closer and asked if there are problems. I explained her I was hoping to get a drink but didn't want to bother. She started talking in a very good English. I can speak enough Portuguese to get by but am definitely not fluent. And explained me it was a party after a wedding. She was older than me. Probably late 40s but very good looking. She asked me if I wanted to join her upstairs for a drink, and she brought me to her room. We spent 30 minutes banging on every possible surface until she told me she had to go back to the lounge. I asked her why the hurry, and she told me she was the mother of the bride. I felt like in a MasterCard advert. When I was a wee little thing I loved the Power Rangers. This was when the Power Rangers first came out, they were all that was good and right with the world and damn it, I was a member of their fan club. I was in Discovery Zone and I saw them, the Power Rangers who'd shown up for some kid's birthday in a private room. I begged and pleaded with my father to let me meet them but he told me that I couldn't go in there because it wasn't my party and I didn't know anyone and they would kick me out. In theory he was right. Well, as we walked away my little feet trudged me back to the door, I cracked it open and slipped into the private room where other kids were having a blast and the Power Rangers were talking to everyone equally. I got to meet them, shake their hands and give them all hugs and it was probably the defining moment of my life up until that point. I was maybe six to seven. My dad looked mortified, but walked into the private room in an attempt to fetch me and apologize, but lo and behold, no one really cared that I was there. No one seemed to notice that I didn't know anyone, and none of the parents seemed to notice that no one knew my father. In hindsight, most of the parents probably didn't know each other and were at the party just to be with their kids. At this point I should mention that I met the Power Rangers. Not some people dressed in Power Ranger costumes, but the actors who played them on TV. At the time, I didn't even understand the concept behind actors, so to me, these guys were the Power Rangers and when they left, they would go back to fighting monsters. I spent an hour with some random kids who became my friends and the motherfucking Power Rangers before I got tired, wished everyone goodbye, and they waved back like we'd been friends forever. The other kids were friendly, the Power Rangers were awesome people and the parents all seemed chill about it. When I was like 11 I went to this big children's fishing festival where all the kids in attendance got their names put into a hat and then drawn out to determine which guide they were paired with, in groups of 2 to 3 per guide. Well lo and behold, my name is first so my brother and I get to go with the number one guide there, who happens to be a professional fisherman or something. The guy was the only guide to come with his own cameraman. Like an actual cameraman tagged along with us. So apparently this guy, who was very nice and I had a great time with, is a somewhat famous fishing video maker and my brother and I were filmed every time we reeled in a fish. The guide told us we may make it into one of his videos or even onto a fishing TV show but he didn't know for sure. So one day I'm sitting there watching ESPN on a Sunday morning before church and no shit, there I am with my little brother catching a big ass walleye. Of course my parents were getting ready and my brother was in the shower so no one else saw it but it was nuts. This was before DVR or anything and I had no idea it was coming so I couldn't set up a recording but I was on ESPN for like 30 seconds. Probably the pinnacle of my fame right there. When I was about 8 years old my dad and I were throwing the Nerf Whistler football out in the yard. My dad had quite the arm back in the day so when we got done throwing around he decided he wanted to send a laser right in the back of his truck from about 30 yards away. Naturally I begin to run inside and dad accidentally hits me so hard with the Whistler that it has left a permanent dimple in the side of my face. Lucky for me though, it hit me square in the jaw where normal dimples usually are. That is probably the source of why people don't believe me but that shit happened. Hearing that high-pitched whistle coming directly from my face was absolutely terrifying. So my friends and I are sitting in my apartment and my buddy Asian Nate, the Gaijin part is pertinent to the story, but also what we called him, begins telling a story about how he had recently jizzed in his own eye while fapping. Nate is a horrible storyteller. In the middle of his story my other buddy, Jeremiah, gets up to use the restroom. For context, Asian Nate is sitting in a lazy boy recliner that is in the corner of the living room. The restroom that Jeremiah is visiting is at the opposite end of the room and a few feet down a hallway. If I had to wager, I'd say the door to the restroom was a good 20 feet from the recliner, also pertinent to the story. Nate rambles for long enough that Jeremiah has time to take a leak and wash his hand and step back into the hallway to hear the end of the story. Evidently Jeremiah's hands were feeling a bit chapped and he decided to grab the economy-sized bottle of Jurgen's lotion from our bathroom. Yeah, when four dudes live in an apartment the 32 fluid ounces lotion bottle is a good investment and stand in the hall while applying said lotion to hear the end of Asian Nate's fapping story. Well I guess Jeremiah lubed his hands up a little more than expected and just as Asian Nate is delivering the punchline to his jizz and I story, Jeremiah looses his grip on the Jurgen's bottle. The miracle of physics that then took place is hard to do justice. 
The bottle did a perfect 180-degree inversion landing pump down on the floor. As Asian finally says the words, and then I jizzed in my own eye, the stream of Jurgen's lotion is ejected at near light speed and lands, some 20 feet away, directly in Asian Nate's eye. If I live to 100 I will never see a more serendipitous series of events. It was magical. If you enjoyed these stories, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your favorite story below. Thanks for watching.